Great. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another one of our monthly hot powered speaking community calls. And I know you're always excited and you love being with us. And, you know, I know that we have a few first timers here with us as well. So let me introduce who I am, who we are, why, what we are doing here together. But I tell you that if you want to bring your speaking and your speaking business to the next level, you're in the perfect place right here, right now. So uh, welcome. Um, my name, if you haven't met me before, is I'm the founder of Hot Powered Business. Our mantra is speak up, scale up, impact the world. And we've really helped hundreds of clients from around 50 countries and more than 50 countries by now to really go professional with their speaking and to really double, triple, some of them even quadruple their income with our Voice to Millions framework. And, uh, you know, I've been myself a paid speaker for more than 25 years. I've been on stages in more than 30 countries on five continents. And I know that all of you are here because you want to step up with your speaking further. You want to grow your speaking business further. You want to shine your light in the brightest way and touch more lives, make a bigger and positive impact around the world. And if you really are keen to step up with your speaking, let me tell you also that, uh, you know, we have something that we call a thought leader circle, which includes two sessions a month with us, where in one session, in the first session a month, which is always our speaking uh, booster session, we guide you through one accelerator activator to bring your speaking to the next level. We help you tackle your speaker profile, your speaker bio, get you more ideas on how to get booked more and paid more as a speaker. And then the second session is always like we give you some insights. The second session is always where we uh, give you an opportunity to turn into practice and, and you know, and, and draft uh, what we discussed in the first session. And then you get concrete feedback on your speeches, your speaker profile, your, you know, uh, speaking booking approach and everything else. So I will share with you in the chat for everyone that is here with us for the first time and everyone that has been here with us that hasn't taken up this opportunity yet. I'm sharing with you in the chat an invite to our Thought Leader Circle. And I tell you that the first month is entirely free, no risk, okay, you have nothing to lose. So if that resonates with you, check it out. The link is in the chat. Um, and uh, you can be with us for one month for free to really get your speaking to the next level. And I know how many people love being with us. So take that up as an opportunity. However, this session is not about me. It's all about you and the expert guests that we always have with us. And we have an amazing guest with us today. And, uh, you know, as you know, every, uh, you know, our sessions are really all about sharing with you the latest and greatest tips, methods, tools, processes, approaches, methodologies to bring your speaking and your speaking business to the next level. And every month we are having a concrete expert guest. And again, this month we invited someone that is quite, you know, advanced experience, famous. He is really an institution in the world of speakers. And he is going to talk about how you unlock the magic of AI and how you use it to transform your messages and bring your best messages to a different level. And I'm sure that a lot of you want to really elevate your storytelling and your speaking skills to create more impact. The question is, how do you do that and integrate AI seamlessly into your message crafting process? And that's what we talk about today. And let me introduce our amazing guest today. As a young man, he was inspired by the remarkable people he met in Miami's secret floating village. The sailboat anchorage attracted really world travelers, dreamers, and bums, all with remarkable stories to tell. And by the time he graduated college, he was living aboard his own tiny sailboat and set sail for the Bahamas with a locker full of food and dreams and just $40 in his pocket. His voyages took him up and down the Bahamas, up the east coast of the US and across the Atlantic to Gibraltar. He ran aground, dealt with mechanical breakdowns, got seasick more than once, slept in a volcano, survived powerful storms, and returned to the land of clocks and calendars with what he'd gone in search of, stories of his own. Today, He's an amazing speaker, trainer, coach, and he really helps remarkable people tell remarkable stories through writing, speaking, graphic design, video, technology, and music. So if you want to say it, share it, or sell it, bring it to him. 
bring him your story. He'll help you tell it. So who is our guest today? His name is Dave Bricker. Dave, it's amazing to have you. Welcome, welcome. Monique, thank you uh, for having me today. This is a pleasure. And thank you to all of the folks who have joined in. And though it's not required, if you would care to show up and turn your cameras on, you're welcome. And hopefully there'll be some time at the end for you to turn your microphones on. I will try to answer any and all questions provided they're not too tough. So let's talk a little bit about the big topic. What's everybody talking about? Artificial intelligence. And if you're like me, you've had different experiences. Maybe you've generated some really clever material. And uh, someone, please mutate your microphone. I'm not sure who's uh, got the background chatter going. Huh? Let's see. I also take care of it, Dave. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Monique. Appreciate that. Anyway, you have to know what to ask the AI, because if you don't, it's going to give you really absurd results. And in the beginning, when AI started to become popular, I was pretty down on it. I was getting really lame, cliche results out of the AI. And I thought, what is the big deal about all of this technology? And as I began to try to work with it and squeeze good results out of it, I discovered some techniques. So the title of this talk today is Say Hi to AI, H-I being human intelligence. Because if we leave AI on its own, it's not going to produce very useful results. Some of the problems we see with AI, I asked AI to create a square circle. It did not say, Dave, what the heck is that? That's absurd. It just tried to create one. And as artistic as that may be, there's no such thing as a square circle. It's also really bad at faces and hands. When you try to get images out of it, they're still working on that. I expect it's going to be better, but that might be an okay oil painting, except that one of her eyes is uh, crossed. Simple things that it has trouble with. Also, I asked AI to create a picture of a woman rowing. And it understood that there's a boat involved, there's water involved, and that there are oars involved. But it clearly doesn't know what oars do. There's a certain level of awareness that it doesn't have. It's almost dreamlike, some of the abstractions you get out of it. And you very often have to bundle a lot of instructions. And sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't. But if you don't ask for what you're trying to get, you get these weird results. Yes, it looked like looks like a, a mediocre painter in some market painted it. It looks like oil paint, but those ores are definitely not doing what they're supposed to do. It doesn't ask clarifying questions, like I mentioned. And if you ask it for a particular story type, it's easy to say, write me an introduction for my speech, write me an elevator pitch, write me a blog post. And sometimes the results are passable, but understanding the story structures that you want it to return information in is the big deal. Because if you just ask for a story, an essay, an article, you get mixed results because it doesn't understand. It doesn't have really advanced or reliable models for stories. Another thing is when you get that email that says, I hope this letter finds you well, you can pretty much bet that it was written by an AI. AI loves cliches because it is mining information from this big pool of mediocrity we call the internet. So we need to teach it how to speak. We need to enforce higher standards or we get these kind of look-alike, sound-alike results. And certainly that's not we as speakers need, and it's not what the internet needs more of, what the information pool needs more of. Let's look at some of the strengths of AI. Now, here's a client of mine that creates an AI, that, that has created an AI that reads dental x-rays and here you can see the caries, the cavities in blue. And if you look right in the middle between those top two teeth, between teeth 
tooth 13 and tooth 14, that little bit of decay could be very easy to miss. Even the best dentists miss pathologies on x-rays 30% of the time. If you look at some of those tiny blue areas of decay, around, especially around the yellow fillings, wow, wouldn't you like to catch that early and save some pain and some expense? AI is great at pattern matching and logic. It's also fantastic at reading mammograms, which are full of a lot of fibrous and vascular tissue, and it can find those little tumors where the human eye is difficult. Another thing not all of us use AI for is code. Now, I'm not a big coder. I understand the basics, but I have a lot of faith in AI's ability to write code in JavaScript or PHP or whatever. I'm not going to go all techie on you, but AI writes beautiful code, and you can do incredible things if you know what to ask it. I'll dive into that a little bit later. Another thing is you can ask for a crayon drawing or an oil painting or a steel plate engraving or a pencil drawing. It's really fantastic when it gets the composition right. That one on the right, that's a pretty odd looking boat, but the style is there. So again, the ability of AI to generate images that we can use is fantastic. And I'll show you more of that. I use AI for illustrations a lot of the time. If you're writing a book, then you might find, or, or creating blog posts or whatever, with the right instructions, you might find that AI will generate incredible results for you. And just because we're talking about this, all of the AI I'm using and talking about here today is ChatGPT. It's the paid version, most of it, but uh, it's all accessible to everybody. So how can we use AI to produce excellent and original results? One is be specific about what you want. These are the kind of arguments we have with our spouses and, and partners, right? We ask for something or they ask for something and we don't understand what they want because they weren't specific. We need to provide as much relevant detail as possible or the AI is not going to understand what we want. It mimics intelligence. And sometimes we tend to think that it's going to read our minds like like our partners and friends are supposed to do, and it doesn't. So if I say, tell a story about a hero, that's as vague as that other thing. It's not going to get me a result I can use. What about create a story about a young, inexperienced knight who must rescue a kidnapped princess from a dragon in a mystical forest? I'm giving details about the time, the setting, the characters. It doesn't have to be long. But ask for what you want, or you're going to get something weird and unexpected. And if you walk away there, you're going to leave disappointed with what AI can do for you. This seems simple and obvious, but it's a lesson I know I had to learn. Be specific. Clear and concise language. We have this same problem again, communicating to our audiences, communi communicating to our friends and loved ones. Don't confuse the AI. It's be specific. If I say, describe an old fashioned trading hub with lots of people and goods, that's all right. But I could say, describe a bustling marketplace in a medieval European town. Now I'm thinking about cobblestones, maybe a castle in the background. I'm giving hooks for the AI to create imagery with. And if it doesn't get it right the first time, I'll be able to coax it along the path. We also don't want the AI to sound like AI. This is the big challenge, is trying to get the AI to sound as much like us as possible. Wouldn't it be great if AI could write at least draft copy for us that sounded like we wrote it instead of like it came out of the blog post omatic? that the next person could just as easily have gotten? Define the tone. Is it a humorous piece, a serious message? Is it formal? Is it conversational? Come up with as many of these adjectives as you can think of that would describe 
the tone. And just that can make a big difference in terms of closing the gap between you and the content that the AI generates. So again, write a story about a cat versus write a humorous and lighthearted story about a mischievous cat. Those adjectives are really going to help the AI generate messages that are in line with you and the results that you're looking for. Key elements or themes, themes and motifs of your story. Create a story set in a dystopian future versus themes of betrayal and redemption. What is it about? Because if we just provide a setting or a time, we're leaving things too open. All of these things revolve around different types of specificity that people provide fail to provide to the AI over and over. And shortly, I'm going to introduce some solutions and tools to these problems that you can actually use rather than just listen to a lot of theory. Setting clear objectives is so important. We're all speakers, I believe, in the room here. And so many speeches fail because I remember somebody came into my NSA chapter and said, don't think of yourselves as speakers. Think of yourselves as subject matter experts. Now, I'm not one to rush and, and grab somebody and haul them off the stage. But no, subject matter experts are the people who bored you in school because they were data dumpers. They were delivering information. Speakers deliver transformation. And when we write a speech without a clear idea of how do we want our audience to think, feel, and or act different? We're lecturing. We're not speaking. How are we delivering transformation instead of information? If you're writing anything without a goal in mind, you're sketching, you're sounding things out, or you're writing an academic paper that's designed to inform. So if I wrote a, write a motivational story, Okay, we can all use motivational stories in our speeches, but write a motivational story to inspire a high school audience to embrace math and science. That's transformation. It's not what I speak about. It may not be what you speak about, but can you see this idea? We want to motivate people to think differently, to change their behavior. And this is what we do on the platform we figure out what our objectives are. It's not the topic we speak on, it's the transformation we inspire that sets us apart as speakers. Break down complex requests. Have you ever noticed that when you talk too much, people stop listening? It's just basic human behavior and it's the same with the AI. One step at a time. First, introduce the main character in the background, then describe the conflict they face, and then conclude with how they resolve it. So if you're asking, these are sample steps you might give to the AI. Don't ask it to blurt out a big mess of stuff. Give it the order that you want things in, and you will get much more useful and clear results. Just break it down. Take time to write your prompts on Notepad or in Word or, or in Google Docs before you paste them in and just deliver them to the AI. You may not get the results you want the first time. I rarely do, although every once in a while I'm surprised and I get something really clever I wish I'd thought of. And because I asked for it, I get to claim it. That's part of the magic of AI, but if you don't succeed, well, if I wrote, write a suspenseful story, that gives me something generic. Write a suspenseful story about a detective. Unra okay, I'm getting specific. Take the results you get and reiterate and reframe and refine. Sometimes you'll go down a rabbit hole and give up. That's happened to be many times. And then other times you will discover something so useful and so powerful. It's all about giving it the right information. And there's a little bit of luck involved too. Assign a role. This is so useful. 
if I'm asking for information, instead of just asking the AI for marketing tips, who's talking? What expert do you want to consult? Because I can say, create a persuasive, persuasive message that inspires people to sign up for my class. Okay, there's some transformation there. But what if I say, act as an email marketing copywriter, create a persuasive message? Oh, it's going to give me that perspective. Or act as a storytelling expert, act as a legal advisor, act as a financial advisor, act as a, an IT consultant act as an HR consultant. And when you are speaking to a group of people, why not ask the, ask the AI to give you information? Act as if you're a member of the National Association of Imaginary Associations. How would you feel about this message, right? Tell it to speak from a certain voice and you'll get really interesting and useful responses. Now, here's another one. Would you like it medium rare? How do you want your steak? Because we tend to write text in the prompt and we ask, we get text back or we ask for an image. Look at all of these formats, list, PDF, XML, HTML. I can get code in JavaScript, PHP, Perl, God knows what. I can get a graph, a Gantt chart. I'm not gonna read these all to you because I'll put you to sleep. But do a little research on the kinds of information you can ask for. Most people, and until recently, that includes me, didn't know that you could get ChatGPT to generate a word cloud. That could be really useful. So specify the format you want in because a graph or a Gantt chart, an illustration, a table, some of this stuff can be really useful and can save you hours of time that you would spend generating some of this stuff or sourcing it on your own. Here's another one. In the chat GPT prompt box, there's a little upload uh, icon. If you have a, make a rules file that includes your style, your way of writing, maybe some of your important points. Make a rules file, because I can ask it to create website copy for a high-end graphic design business, or I can say, create website copy for my graphic design business, adhere to the copywriting rules in the PDF provided. I don't have to copy and paste that stuff. I can keep some files ready, full of guidance pages of guidance. I can ask a simple question and then say, follow the rules in the cheat sheet. This is another way to get AI to produce results that sound like you. And not only do they sound like you, they sound like you by omitting all of the things you would never say. Don't use these words. Don't use these phrases. Avoid talking about yourself. I always call that get rid of your eye infection because too many speakers have one. Stop talking about I this and I that. What if you had a list of your speaking principles and you uploaded it with your chat GPT prompts? You're going to get closer to stuff that you can actually use. So some prompt formatting basics. Here is a formula, act as a marketing consultant, create a light humorous, light humorous blog post in text format that inspires I don't know, Zoom attendees to visit my website. You can fill in the blanks there. Feel free to take a, a picture of that formula. I'm going to do better than that. I've actually created a little tool that embodies that formula that you'll be able to use. But look at how much information is there. Does it work for every prompt? No. Do you need an illustration? If you are researching synonyms or rhymes, this is not going to help you. But when you're looking for information, 
especially if you're looking for information about your audience or about a business or a community or an industry, this kind of thing can really help you. Or if you're writing copy for a website, lots of stuff in that one formula. There it is. Act as a marketing consultant, create a humorous email in rich text format that inspires professionals to value business storytelling. That's a very specific prompt. And as you engineer it for your own purposes, you're going to get useful results out of the AI. Again, AI is nothing without HI. If you can add that human intelligence factor, you're going to feel empowered. And where I'm going to take you shortly is I actually created this tool in about 15 or 20 minutes in preparation for this workshop. And I'll show you how to get there. There's the QR code, but there it is, speakypedia.com slash AI dash prompt dash monster. I don't know, Monique, I probably should have had that prepared, but if you'd be willing to put that in the chat, uh, that would be useful to people. Otherwise, I'll certainly give you links at the end. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. So story structures. Here are the questions, because we have a formula now for asking AI but we have a variety of different needs. How do you create an effective story? How do you create an effective introduction? How do you create an elevator pitch? Haven't we all been to meetings where we're just like, oh, somebody shoot me if I have to listen to another boring elevator pitch before we go around the room? How do we create a compelling elevator pitch? What about a professional bio? Don't count on the AI to know how this stuff. Thank you for that, that link, uh, Roberto. I appreciate that. So communication style. Are you engaging or enraging? Because if we use too many cliches, that gets boring. If another person says something is awesome, what 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 if something really is awesome? What do you say? I language versus you language. Too much of that eye infection. How do we make an offer instead of an ask? What about boring verbs like put, use, and develop compared to engage, create, explore? Are you counting on the AI to make these recommendations for you? Because it probably won't. We need to create tools that help with this. Bland adjectives. What if you gave somebody a gift and they told you it was nice? Isn't that disappointing? Good, bad, nice. These are such vacuous verbs. And again, we can get into amazing, incredible, explosive. There are power adjectives as well as verbs. The word choice. Then there's the words versus the delivery. Because I can memorize a speech with great difficulty. If you're like me, you struggle to do that. And then I can read it to the audience out of my head, and it will be just as boring as if I read it off a page. So getting those presentation skills, how do we rehearse a speech? How do we annotate a speech so that we can rehearse it with dynamics? So the solution to that is there on the speakypedia.com slash influencer dashboard. And, and Juan, if you can put that link in the chat for me too, I'd appreciate it. He's right on top of it. Thank you. Appreciate it. So great to have someone amazing on my team. Thank you. So what I'm going to do here is ask Monique to, I'm going to share my screen and you can stop spotlighting me. I will come up full here and share my screen and show you a few of these tools. All right. So the first one I mentioned was the prompt monster and the ability to create prompts. And I created a little web app in the website and 
Here are your roles. Act as a marketing consultant. Create a lighthearted, uh, what do I want? A blog post. I want it in rich text format, and I want it to, it persuades professionals to, um, I don't know, I'm going to throw in something to save time. Visit my website. When I click generate the AI prompt, I can take this prompt and I can paste it right into the AI. So if you go to speakypedia.com slash AI dash prompt dash monster, you can use this formula and save a little time. It's not the generation of the prompts that's really such a big deal. It's the idea that it asks you to think about. It taps your human intelligence so that you can create a prompt that's actually going to get you some useful results the first time. Quick break, and I wanna take a little time and go through and make sure there's time to answer your questions. How did I do this? I went to ChatGP, I told it what I wanted, and it created my HTML code, my CSS code, and my JavaScript code, and I plugged that all into a development environment called CodePen. There's my code. If this is all Greek to you, don't worry about it. You don't have to become a programmer. But I got ChatGP to help me think of my different roles, my different tasks. You may not be a coder, but you can rehear my formats, the tones. Most of this is plain English, and this runs, and then I took this code and copied and pasted it into my WordPress site using a plugin. So you can actually create tools and calculators using ChatGPT. It wrote all the code. I asked for a few tweaks, and I was done. This is how I fool people into thinking I'm a genius. I just know how to use the tools. And... I created that tool for this presentation, but there are a bunch of them on that influencer dashboard page. That's an easy way to get to them. And there's a nice little menu at the top. And again, this is WordPress, but I even created that menu widget, the little up and down menu using ChatGPT. There's so much code here that is written with ChatGPT. There's so much you can do with AI if you know what to ask it. A few demos, and I'm just gonna run the demos because the actual AI tools are a few weeks away from being released. I'm working out a few final bugs. So if you like any of these, you can join the mailing list on the, on the page. But I'm gonna just load this 50 minute uh, keynote. The idea is, you want to inspect your audience. Who are you speaking for? So when I go here, this is a leadership speech. What are the outcomes I'm trying to produce? I help managers to inspire their teams. It's 50 minutes long. It's a keynote as opposed to a workshop, whatever it is. Here's the audience, corporate audience, right? They have been forced to endure numerous boring presentations on topics mandated by the compliance team. Attendance is compulsory and they will bring low expectations and resentment. Well, that's your audience and it too often is. Here's their name. They're the Snack Food Association, Snack International. Who's not going to be in the audience? This presentation is for team leaders only. No team members or executives are gonna be there. No team members or executives. And then I'm leaving 10 minutes for Q&A. When I go to the next section and I ask the AI, it's going to take this information and behind the scenes, it's going to do some prompt engineering. And now I've got the demographics. Late, yeah, individuals in their late 20s to early 50s, fairly evenly split between male and female, likely to have at least a bachelor's degree. Um, have a background in business, income, psychographics, their attitudes, their interests, their values, their lifestyle, trends and likes. It's evolving trends toward healthier options. This is doing so much research on my audience based on the prompts I gave it. You don't need to know what to ask it. I'm going to step you through a few of these. What conflicts are they facing? It goes to the AI gives the information based on the prompts. 
lack of effective communication and collaboration, difficulty managing and motivating team members. If you're going to speak to this audience, don't you want to know what conflicts they're facing? What are they struggling with? Because if you can come in and solve a problem that costs them more than your fee, then you can raise your fee. If you're a dollar less than the cost of that problem, you're a good deal. All right? What's the history of that industry and the organization? Here's one, news items. Are there news articles about the company or about the industry? And of course that didn't show up because I'm giving a demo, but you give the idea, you get the idea. Landmines, are there words and topics you want to avoid? I spoke to the Industrial Packaging Alliance of North America. They make all the metal and plastic drums that they ship food and oil and things in, you never want to call them a barrel. That's a bad word. You always call them drums. Plug that stuff in and find out what topics to avoid. Finally, let's see if this is going to work for me. Content suggestions. There it is. Here's outline one, five minutes. It's going to give me three possible content outlines. It does not write your presentation for you. You're the expert and you should be doing that. But the idea that you've got three content outlines and you will all also notice that there's a Q&A, which is always second to last. And then there's a closing statement. Because if you close with Q&A, you kill that energy. So allow that time for Q&A and then allow those five minutes for that closing statement so you can leave on a high note. So there are speaking tips built in to the whole thing. Here's another one. This is one of my favorites. I talked about elevator pitches. Let's be a speaker who's appealing to event organizers. So these are plugged in in the demos. You're an event organizer. That's the prospect. Qualify your prospect. Who are they? What problems? The event organizer has a problem that their event att attendees are bored and disappointed. When I suggest prompts, this thing is actually going to go and get me a list of choices. And it tries to use rhyme or alliteration. Um, are you an innovative event organizer who wants to keep it? I'm gonna go with number one, but it gives you 20 choices and it's AI. Some of them are going to be clever and some of them are gonna be Horrible. Let's go to the next one. I can edit it here if I want and then go to the next one. Here's the introduction. Here's the name. Let's suggest some introductions, but let's use the information that we entered in the first. Uh, the entertainment enchantress, enchant, enchantress, the excitement, fun-filled, very um, party planning pro, engagement empress. I'm going to go with that one. Laughter leader. It's trying to use rhyme alliteration to make that fun. Sometimes it succeeds, sometimes it fails. And finally, what is the transformation? You've introduced yourself. What do they get? Well, your guests are going to feel excited and delighted. And what do you want them to do? Visit your website, talk to you after the program, whatever it may be, uh, shoot the QR code. So when I do this, I get suggestions about the transformation and the call to action. Um, ignite the delight. Let's chat tonight about speaking and training just right. Um, let's just go with number one and save the time, but I can do what I want. And there is an elevator pitch. Are you an innovative event organizer who wants to keep attendees engaged and entertained? I'm Kim Levin, your engagement empress. Ignite the delight. Let's chat tonight about speaking and training just right. If you deliver that at a networking meeting, it's going to be memorable, especially if you take more than the three minutes I took to put it together. Refine your prompts and things like that. This is one, and I use a model. If you don't, if you don't know Christine Cashin, look her up. She's absolutely brilliant. She's a Hall of Fame speaker. And this is for creating the introduction that you give to the MC and they will almost always screw it up. They'll rewrite it, they'll change it, but I'm gonna go ahead and load this demo. You can see I've got my pronouns and things. When you love to keep your employees, it starts with an opening question. Here are some credentials. 
What have you done as a speaker? Fortune 100 CEO, built two eight-figure businesses from scratch, Forbes Magazine's 2022 Woman Entrepreneur of the Year, three short credentials. And then there's a twist. When she's not inspiring business leaders to create nurturing, productive, and profit-driven work cultures, she's playing with her three rescue boxer dogs or building ships in bottles or whatever it is that's surprising. Give them something that doesn't fit with the others. What are they here to do? Where are they from? And then create my introduction. And there it is. There's an introduction that fits on a page. You can edit it, change it as you want. And there is even a cover sheet that you can include. My introduction is part of my presentation. It was carefully designed to build energy and prime our audience to receive the value you invited me to share. Please read it exactly as it was written without additions or modifications. Need to change it, please ask. Because how many of us have had the MC improvise and butcher our introductions? It happens all the time. Monique, not today. You did a fabulous job. Thank you. <laughs> Could tell when you're working with a professional. Another one, we talked about cliches. Load some sample text and reveal the cliches. You can say that outside the box is in red. It's most overused. And then there are, all, there are 750 cliches in here ranked from mild to spicy and colored accordingly tools you can use. Here's one for your web copy. And again, some of these aren't even using AI. They're just, although some of the research was done with AI, but if I want to add some sample text and then analyze it, it's color coding it. I talked about the I language and the U language. You can see in the bottom, the heart words, those powerful verbs are, are green, the U language, and then it gives me a score. Two instances of U language, two instances of I language, that's 50% U language. It tells you how you're doing with your adjectives and things like that, your verbs. And you can copy and paste your text into there and get a lot of feedback on your website copy, on your blog posts, things like this. Researching the cliches was the AI part. Researching the list of heart verbs and things like that. And all of these things have descriptions here that explain how they work, that I'm sparing you at the moment. And whether you're creating static content like a blog post or a web app, doing that research with AI, doing the coding with AI is fantastic. Here's a simple one. If I change the number of words, the word count changes. If I want to get this down to 140, that's my target. That's just a note to myself. I want this to be a one minute speech. So maybe I need to speed up my delivery. Well, that took it to one minute, but that's pretty fast, right? Have you ever written a speech and not known how long it was going to be? That can be really frustrating. Copy and paste it, look at the word count. And I usually figure 120 words per minute gives me time to pause, but I can play with the word count. I can add and subtract and edit and get some idea of how, what the duration is going to be. <laughs> Finally, I'm just gonna touch on this one. And this is the storytelling wizard, which is by far the most sophisticated of the AI tools. I'm going to do this, uh, a dramatic story about storytelling demo. And when I go to the next one, and it didn't load, let me go back and just do the first one. Here it is, our speech on leadership, right? When I, so the tone, the time frame, the geographical location, and what's happening, corporations are struggling. When I click research my story, this goes out and sends the prompt to the AI. Here are general history, the founding of Silicon Valley, the rise of tech giants, the dot-com bubble, the rise of the gig economy. This is finding all sorts of elements I might want to include in my story that I might not have thought of. Relevant people and themes, 
Uh, Josh Harris. I don't know who Josh Harris was, but if I was writing this story, I would look him up. Founder of pseudo.com. Um, Ellen Pow. I don't know these people. I'll admit my ignorance, but if I'm writing a book about this environment and these people, I might want to include them. I might even want to write them into my story. Another thing that's great here is this is going to show me other stories, books, and films that are similar to mine. I don't want to accidentally rewrite somebody else's story. If I'm writing a story about a young kid who thinks there's a wizard who think who who turns out to be a wizard, I don't want to rewrite Harry Potter. So here are films and stories. I'm just going to show you one or two more tabs here uh, in this post. You can explore these on your own, but who is it? Who is the protagonist? What is their backstory? What does normal life look like for them? Do they have an Achilles heel? And I can find out all sorts of ideas to write in for that story. How's How to develop the character. And this goes on. You will not create a story in 10 minutes with this tool. It might take you hours because as you get into the different tabs, some of them have a few what are the steps in the story? There can be a lot of them. Play with the demos, see what you think. And if you want to get early access, that's going to happen soon. Speaking of q and I want to leave time. And I could play with my toys all day, but I want to make sure I answer any of your questions. I'm going to turn the screen sharing off and invite you to... Turn on your microphones and your cameras and smile and uh, see if you can put me to work for you. Great. Wow. That was kind of a firework, uh, Dave. Uh, what you can do as speakers, right? I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure all of you might feel a little bit flashed and impressed, right? And think like, oh, my God, so many possibilities of what we can do with this. Uh, you know, uh, and I, I start getting positive feedback saying, yeah, interesting, amazing, and eye-opening. Uh, the question is, what questions do you have? What do you need to know? What do you want to know? What questions have you always had maybe around AI and how to use AI as a speaker? You know, was there anything in Dave's presentation that, uh, you, know, you know, struck a chord for you, resonated with you, and you want to tap more into it what, what questions are coming up for you mark has his hand up go ahead mark yeah i thought it'd be nice and put my hand up instead of just barging in hey thank you so much david it was very informative really interesting and uh you presented some really great things and i love the i put in the chat i love the way you gamified you know your tools i thought they made them look really fun and interesting to use i, I was just you know curious I and mean, these are all just amazing tools and i can't wait to to try them out and play a little bit more but like so, you built all these little gamified things in a mm -hmm. using AI by by you, putting in using a combination of HI and AI, yes. But on a code level, they're all done. I got a little bit of help from someone in Far Away Stand to write the PHP scripts that communicate between the website and the OpenAI API, but it's all ninety five percent done by me all of those illustrations are created by ai the tabbed interface is created by ai what's possible if you know what to ask it is tremendous yeah that's really really great and really informative and just really um, makes me want to dig dig deeper into it so thank you so much i really appreciate this yeah my pleasure i appreciate it um punam Hello, thank you for that. That was very, very insightful. A uh, question I have for you. I know you were talking mainly about chat GPT at the beginning of the session. What's your view on tools like Gemini and Gemini Advance? My, my view is at some point, I'd like to integrate all of them so that if people, or at least several of them, you never get all of them because they're sprouting like weeds. Uh, there, uh, there are so many of them popping up. I like the idea that somebody could go into a tool and select a button and get uh, output from a different AI, send the same prompts, figure out what's good, what prompts are good for marketing copy, uh, what AIs are good for illustrations, so on and so forth. The, this could be 
expandable. Right now, I'm just, I figured out how to tap into the OpenAI API, and I've done this all on my own time and wallet. So this is where it stands. I've got all sorts of plans to open this up and, and do other yeah. things with it. Okay. Um, Did I answer your question? Yeah, kind of. I was just interested to see if you had used any of the others, because obviously chat GPT is the one that we're all aware of and is very prevalent. Um, I did attend an earlier session on AI and, uh, and uh, a website was recommended saying um, there's an AI for that dot com, which, as you said, lists all the different AI types for the different types of work you might want to do. So I haven't looked at it yet, but that was um, that was mentioned in an earlier webinar. Thank you. And a year from now, it'll all have changed and evolved in different directions. And who knows if who knows where where we'll be and how these tools can grow. Super, thank you. Any further questions? So I'll, I will close and turn the floor back over to Monique. I thank you all for attending uh, today and, and uh, being a part of this. And please, that whole Speakypedia website, speakypedia.com has uh, about 500 pages of information. There's a podcast where I interview some amazing speakers and uh, you would honor me by simply using it and enjoying it. Monique? Fabulous. You? Thank you, Dave. And uh, let me also uh, tag you back in. Um, it's been great to have you. Thank you. As I said, it was very inspiring. I mean, so many things I haven't even thought about asking ChatGPT. I mean, I've been playing with ChatGPT for a while, obviously. And uh, you know, and you know, a lot of people say, "Oh my God, so many possibilities, so so many things we can do." From all the options that you shared, um, you know, what would you say? What are the things people should look at first? Because there's so many things you presented, so many things. You know, I mean, people can play with tools, can try things out, but you know, what you know, what do you recommend people to start looking at first? I would just say, start playing with the free version of ChatGPT and see how far you can push it. Just using some of the techniques we talked about today, being specific, maybe think about a style guide, write a document and save it as a PDF, upload it and see what results you get. Play, play, play. It doesn't cost you anything. And even the, the paid for version is... $20 US a month or something like that. If you get one useful bit of content out of it, it pays for itself. And, and then play with those tools in the influencer dashboard and try in your head to reverse engineer how those prompts are working. How do I get that information out of your inputs? Love it. And again, you know, as we always say, right, really combine the, the artificial intelligence with human intelligence Okay, even when you get these messages, when you get these hints and so on, as David's saying, you are still a speaker. Make it yours. Make it sound like yours. So keep playing, you know, take inspiration from it. Okay. And then again, add your own final touch to it. Okay. So I love, love the session, Dave. I definitely can't wait to, you know, play with them as well myself. So I, you know, I'm I'm definitely a fan. I hope all of you got some valuable insights from this. You know, if you want to share some of your insights or appreciation with Dave as well in the chat that would be would be lovely. We like to know how do we how do you appreciate our sessions? What are you taking away? How do we inspire you? Right? And uh, yeah, Dave, uh, do you want to round it off with a final inspirational message? Uh, I think I think the final information final inspirational message is that I think anybody can learn to write well and anybody can learn to speak well. <clears throat> and some of these tools are going to help you on that journey. So use all the tools you can and then take Monique's advice, whatever you get from the AI or anywhere else, rewrite it, put your own stamp of originality on it. Fabulous. So use the power of AI and then use your own intelligence experience hard Okay, if you're running a hard powered business, there's a hard powered speaking community call. Add your heart, add your own style, you know, make it yours. And uh, the world is going to be your oyster, right? So, again, you know, go out there, everyone, and just uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Dave, 
being on with us today, for giving us a glimpse into what you're putting together, what you've put together already. I know you're in the final touches on getting it out there in the world. So all of you, okay, if you want to play with it, um, you know, for sure, uh, you know, get to the links, connect with Dave, okay, make sure you can take advantage of it. Um, and, uh, you know, thank you, Dave, for being on with us. Thank you all for, you know, making your mark in the world, you know, using the power of your voice to make the impact that you are making, contributing in the best way to make a positive difference. So we all make a positive difference together, okay? And uh, let's use the tool. So I hope that, you know, one of our intentions today was take a little bit of fear out of it, a little bit of overwhelm out of it, and give you some kind of entry opportunity to start using these tools to your advantage to elevate your speaking and elevate your speaking business and the impact you're making. So all of you, thank you for bringing your magic into the world in a powerful way. Um, you know, I know that quite a few of you signed up also on our Thought Leader Circle trial. So we look forward to serving you for that. Um, you know, uh, in your first month for free, you had a link earlier. And uh, just keep in mind in August, we always take a little bit of a break. So in August, we don't have a session, but we are back in September with another amazing, inspiring guest. That gives you between now and September a lot of time to start, uh, you know, trying out Dave's tools and playing with it. Okay, uh, let's stay in touch, everyone. Um, let us know how we can serve and support you even more to step up with your speaking, with your business. And uh, just go out there, as we always say at the end, speak up, scale up, impact the world in your own powerful way. So thank you for being on with us. Let's be in touch. Let's elevate each other, learn from each other, support each other. So we make the biggest positive impact out there together as speakers, entrepreneurs, and whatever we are. Okay. Thank you all. Day. Thank you all. Thank you, David. Have an amazing summer. We're back in September and we are in touch in the meantime. All the best. For thank now. you all.